Hey everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. I once again have gone way off my schedule of trying to get videos out. I have heaps of footage and just haven't had a chance to do anything else. I've had a couple of days of not being able to do much of anything, some uh, significant pain days that just was not getting anything done. Uh, so I've just had to grip my teeth and go, well, I'm not going to get anything done and it sucks, but that's life. But I'd still have all this footage to get through to share. So we're still doing our uh, like day in the life daily videos of day they're not daily because I don't put them out daily but videos of the days of my kitchen so family of eight we live off grid and we shop once every six to eight weeks and then post that shopping I share in here all the th ways that we use the food make sure that it all gets used process it preserve it cook it meals all that sort of thing and then some other miscellaneous videos in between uh, so this is I think it's like the third video for the food prep since uh, in my end of April beginning of May uh, supply run so we're up to about the third video I think and uh, I'm a little behind like normally these videos come out only a few days post the that when they happen but I've lost a bit of time in just not being particularly well I think a lot of its weather change we got down to negative 1.3 the other night we still don't have a fire going at the moment because the main fireplace is surrounded by too much stuff we have over summer we've encroached on the space and we haven't got it cleared out yet i got some new shelving and stuff yesterday so hopefully we can get that sorted um and we haven't found a second hand fireplace for the other area yet so i think a lot of it's just weather change it's really cold uh i have trigeminal neuralgia for anyone who hasn't heard um and uh the it's a nerve condition in my face that it just doesn't like me being stressed or weather changes things like that i also have um iritis in my eye or did have which was a complication from chickenpox and i can't see pretty very well out of my left eye uh, but it also means that it gives me it can cause headaches and all sorts of things that are all in relation to it so anytime there's a, a change of some sort of circumstance or weather or uh, anything like that I find that I really struggle so uh, I've just had to have a couple of days of downtime unfortunately but let's get back into it we'll get this video out and then hopefully I can type up some notes for the next few videos I think I've got six sitting in sequence waiting to have the notes written out for them uh, I really just need to figure out how to streamline this process and then I might be able to get more of a routine going, but anyway. So let's get on with this particular video and then I will uh, see you when I can with the next lot. So normally I end a video at the end of a day uh, with food related stuff, but somehow I ended the last video uh, like before I'd done dinner somehow. I I'm not real sure. Maybe I just pulled the footage into it and didn't realize that there was more to come for that day. I don't know. But so this video sort of starts at the beginning in a sort of a middle of a day rather than the beginning of a day. So we're getting dinner stuff sorted, but I had stuff from breakfast in the last video. I have no idea. Anyway, so what we were doing here is making the apple cinnamon self-sourcing pudding. Now I have a short with this recipe, the whole recipe is in it and how I make it. It is a favorite here, but I do tend to forget to make it. I, I don't know, it's just one of those things that I really enjoy it when I make it, but I just don't make a lot of desserts. And I've been saying that I really need to get a bit more into the habit of making desserts because it would help with the kids for post dinner, especially when we eat dinner early because it's colder weather. So when it's really cold, our dining table and everything and kitchen is outside on the patio. So once the sun goes down, it gets quite cold here. We've got very desert-like weather. And uh, it means that we eat dinner at like sometimes 5, 5.30 as in winter so having something that could then go in the oven like an apple self-sourcing pudding or whatever I could stick that in the barbecue as I'm serving up dinner and then it would be ready later on and we could have that for dessert which might be helpful but anyway so with this pudding all I do is I dice up the apples evenly and now these were some green apples that I got in the Aberdeen pantry hamper so there were some that were a bit bruised and stuff which is why it's a good way to use them dice them all up into nice evenly diced square type things you can cut them into whatever shape you want i just find that you want them fairly even so they cook fairly evenly uh mix up a simple cake batter so as i said there's a short i'll put the link to the short or a card or something to the short so that you can see the it's got the whole 
uh, recipe in it. Uh, it mix up the simple cake batter that goes over the top of the apples. You mix the apples through it so that it's all nice sort of mixed through. It's very heavy on the cinnamon because we really like cinnamon, but you can tone that back if you need to. Uh, I sprinkle a little extra sugar over the top of the cake batter and apple mix and then dollop it with some sort of a fat. I'm using ghee here, but you can use coconut oil, butter, nutlex, ghee, whatever you want. Because what you're doing is you're turning that sugar and that fat into sort of a caramel sauce. Then I pour over about four cups of boiling water over the top of the pudding and then I pop it in the oven and bake it. And you will end up with this lovely, luscious, rich, caramelly, uh, apple cinnamon self-sourcing pudding and you can do this with any sort of fruit or you can make chocolate ones if you want you just make a chocolate cake and do the same sort of thing but I like to add a bit of fruit if I can after that I was processing more of the chicken thighs so this is partly for dinner and partly for later in the month I did the Asian style marinade that I do which is I slice the thighs up into strips and I marinate them with a bit of soy sauce garlic and ginger uh, and then I put the lid on it and put it back in the fridge for a couple of hours until it's time to cook dinner I can that can stay in the fridge for 24 hours as well if that's what I wanted to do uh, but this particular time I'm gonna use some of this for dinner so I just cut it into nice even strips Soy sauce, ginger, garlic. I don't really measure any of that because it depends on how much chicken there is. I just put a good glug of each in there uh, and then put it aside to marinate. I cut up some of the broccoli and the beans that I had in the fridge. So these were the ones that I kept aside to use from fresh in the veggie containers in the fridge uh, and filled a steamer pan with them. These I will put on the burner on my, the side burner on my barbecue, which means that it takes quite a while to steam them. So you have to sort of do them ahead of when you would normally uh, because that burner just isn't large enough to get that water boiling quick enough for that to be nice and quick. So it takes a while. Uh, I really kind of need another burner. So I've got the double burner on the Camp Chef and a lot of the time it's not quite enough to do a full meal. I end up having to use the side burner when I can, but there just isn't, um, it just doesn't heat up as well. I did bag up some of the chicken that I was that I had marinated for later on in the month, a few 500 gram bags. That means that I can use them however I want to over the month. I can use either two of them for a meal or I can use one of them for, <laughs> one of them for a, um, uh, for a lunch or uh, if I'm using it in a stir fry then we might only need 500 grams instead of the kilo but that gives me the option to use one or both of them. I mixed up a dredge for tonight's dinner. So my favorite way to use this Asian style marinated chicken is with lemon chung syrup. So I mix up potato starch with some salt and pepper, garlic, a bit of paprika for color, and I dredge the chicken straight into that starch mix. It's a very light coating. It works wonderfully to have that crispy chicken but without any sort of thick, heavy batter. It's got a real nice texture to it. The, the chicken stays really nice and moist, but yeah, it doesn't have that heavy sort of a batter to it. I heated some oil up on the stove and then I fried the chicken. Now you can take care not to crowd the oil because we want this to cook nice and quickly, crisp up, stay light and not too oil logged. As I pull it out, I put it on a rack over a tray so that it will drip the oil off and not go soggy while we're waiting. Because I make everything in such large batches, obviously the first lot that I pull out is it's, it's quite a bit of time before the next, uh, before we get to the end of it to serve it up sort of thing. So. You want to make sure that you put it on a rack over a tray just so that it drips or on some people use paper towel and that sort of thing but i rarely have paper towel this is one of those meals where the chicken's a star and therefore we eat a fair amount of chicken in one meal uh, it's one of the as i have discussed previously with the whole budgeting of food and that there's some meals like a stir fry where we can use huge amounts of veggies and just a small amount of meat some people don't use meat at all we prefer to have some meat uh, and then the meat doesn't have to be huge amounts but other things where you're having like like a you know a meat and veg meal then you have quite a significant amount of meat it for that meal and it means that with eight of us it is quite considerable. I steamed some jasmine rice, just plain rice, served the greens over the top and the chicken on that and drizzled it all generously with the lemon chung syrup. So I've shown the lemon chung on here before. It's basically just sliced lemons with uh, sugar put in a jar until the lemons sort of macerate the sugar and it ends up into this really lovely syrup. We really enjoy it. Uh, a couple of the kids don't have the lemon syrup and but every most of us really enjoy it and Daryl and I definitely do. And this really lightly uh, crunchy chicken works really well with the flavor because it's such a light flavor on its own. I made some coconut cream custard in the Thermomix to have with the pudding. 
Now I timed it kind of poorly and the pudding was ready way before dinner was, which is fine. It just means that the sauce gets all absorbed into the cake. So instead of it being wet and saucy, it's very much like a steamed pudding. It's kind of dense and, uh, and thick. Whereas if you have it uh, fresh out of the oven once the, as soon as it's cooked, then that um, sauce is, is very syrupy and it's, it's more like a self-sourcing pudding, but it tastes good either way. I served it up with a scoop of the custard. I'd cooked the custard earlier in the day and then chilled it, then spun it again in the thermic so it was really nice and smooth but chilled, which is always nice with a hot pudding. I kind of, I quite like cold custard with a hot pudding. I know some people prefer hot custard, hot puddings, but I, I quite like cold custard with a hot pudding. The next day I had mixed up a couple of batches of dough. One was a hamburger bun dough, so I let it proof and then shaped it into rolls and put it in the pans for a second proofing. I always make 24 rolls, that, that way there's approximately three each, which gives us dinner and lunch the next day with them, which is always handy when making bread, having enough for leftovers. My barbecue will only fit two of these trays, otherwise I might be tempted to make another tray full as well, just because we'd probably eat another tray full over sort of a 48 hour period. Uh, they're not very, you know, they're always better the day they're baked, but they're okay the next day or so, especially if you toast them up. But my barbecue will only fit two of these trays. I would like to upgrade it to like a six burner so that I can fit more in it, but for the moment, I'm working with what I got. So, I also made some flatbread dough up for lunch, so after it had proofed, I rolled it into balls, and then I rolled it out and cooked it off in the cast iron pans. Again, when I make flatbreads, I like there to be enough for extras if feasible, so I roll them fairly small, and a lot of them, getting between sort of 24 and 32 out of a batch, depending on the size of the balls, whether I weigh them or I just, you know, guesstimate. Uh, we have these for lunch probably four or five times a week, to be honest. It's, it's an our easy form of bread it takes no forward planning it's a quick rise it's still time consuming in essence but doable in our situation because I'm home all the time so I rolled and cooked out a batch of those for us to eat we might have had leftover chicken from the night before to have on them I can't remember but uh, we have them with lots of things so there might be ham there might be eggs there might be sausage meat there's uh, leftovers from the night before or sometimes we have them with a jar of butter chicken or even just with a little bit of ghee and salt and garlic powder once the buns had proofed I gave them an egg wash again we have a cat out here with me and he's <laughs> being difficult interrupting as usual let me he has jumped up on the top of the shade house there, the domed, the domed uh, shade cloth covered house, just to you know be up tall. That's a Keo. The cat that we saw the other day climbing the ladder was Dolores, and this is a Keo. So he's going to sit there and just enjoy himself. Which hey, that's fine. And then we have the guinea fowl coming for a walk past. So we got. making heaps of noise I think because Akio is sitting where they could see him. <laughs> anyway back to the uh, what was I talking about so uh, once the buns had proved I gave them an egg wash and I sprinkled them with sesame seeds and put them in the oven. Uh, the next project chicken project was buttermilk chicken. Now I like to cook this off in a huge batch one batch of oil that I can then discard rather than dirtying multiple oil multiple times throughout the month and making a mess because uh, it's always messy doing anything with oil. It doesn't matter how you do it whether you're doing it over trays or anything else it's always going to make a mess. There's just going to be oil splattered everywhere. So I do prefer to do a huge batch all at once rather than having to do it multiple times. Uh, it also freezes really well and reheats wonderfully so it can be a quick meal later on as well. All you do is pull a bag of it out of the freezer and reheat it over a rack in the barbecue. So the first thing I did was mix up the buttermilk marinade or batter. It depends on how organized I am as to whether I mix it up as a marinade and let it sit in the fridge for 24 hours or whether I turn it into more of a buttermilk batter to use straight away. I use milk kefir for both versions as my form of buttermilk, a sour milk version, but one I add eggs and flour to create a sort of batter and the other one I don't. I use the same spices in both of them, some smoked paprika, some garlic, salt and pepper and whisk it up. Uh, then cut the chicken up to go into the batter or the marinade. Uh, because this is a fairly lengthy task, I decided to fill at the thighs but leave them a little larger than usual, trying to reduce the amount of batches I needed to run through the oil. 
I also pounded them out a little inside a Ziploc just to flatten them out so that they cooked more uniformly in the oil as well because I was leaving the pieces larger. More effort at the beginning to see if it reduced the time required at the end, but it also made the chicken more versatile to have those larger crumbed fillets. I tossed them all in the marinade or bat well this particular case it was a batter, it had eggs and flour in it as I went along. I cut up two full trays for this, so it's approximately 4.4 kilos worth of chicken thighs. I cut up the other two trays of chicken as well, and I think this was the end of the chicken that I needed to process. So this was the last two uh, trays of thighs. I bought eight trays all up this month, and I think this is the last two. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> uh, so I cut up the other two trays to do them like I normally do. So I cut them up fairly small, which is what I do with at least a couple of trays of chicken thighs every month uh, to do my standard sort of a thing with them. So I cook them up to vacuum seal and freeze and then I use them in many many ways throughout the month. On wraps, on pizza, in ramen, in pasta, just about anything. So I use my standard uh, marinade that I use on these thighs which is some cowboy candy, some garlic powder, smoked paprika, dried onion, lemon juice, a bit of salt and pepper, dash of oil, and I massage it all through the chicken to make sure that each, each piece is coated. And then I put it aside just to sort of, you know, get marinated a little bit. We're not overly concerned here because most of it sticks to the surface of the chicken and cooks off anyway. But sometimes I leave it overnight, sometimes I leave it for half an hour. It really just depends on what else I'm doing. I seasoned some flour in my container when, that I use when I'm bulk dredging things and also got started cooking off the marinated chicken. So I'm doing all this at the same time just to get those last four trays of chicken done. I think it was the day that need, like the date that it needed doing. So I had been keeping track and really needed to get it done. I had one cast iron pan going with the marinated chicken and my Dutch oven on the other burner heating up some oil. So as I said I like to cook the marinated thighs in batches because I want the sugars in the cowboy candy to caramelize and coat the chicken. It leaves that sticky slightly charred texture on the outside of the chicken whilst the inside stays moist and juicy. So I don't want to overload the pan so because I don't want it to stew in its own juices and I cook it off slowly for the best end product. As each pan cooks off I put it in a tray and add the next batch. Sometimes I have to scrape some of the sugar bits that are burned to the pan uh, because of that cowboy candy and the slow cooking with the but high heat to sear it initially uh, so sometimes I will scrape the pan in between and add a little bit of oil if needed as well in the pan too. While that's cooking I started dredging the buttermilk chicken. Now we want the flour to sort of flake around the chicken so to do that instead of letting the chicken drip before I put it in the flour I take some of that liquid with me to create a flaky texture in the flour. You want the breading on this to be the opposite of the lemon chung style and be quite thick. Once the oil was hot enough, I started putting batches in there. Like I've said, small batches are good, otherwise the oil gets too cold from the product being added, and then the chicken can get a little fat logged and lose some of its crispness. So I'm running both burners at the same time with slightly different end results. As the marinated chicken cooks, I put it on a baking tray so that it can all be kept together until I process it for the freezer or use it in the next couple of days. I like to put this in a solid based tray because I want those juices to then mix through the chicken before I freeze it. So you want to catch the juices and stuff that come off the marinated chicken. I need to get myself some more of those big glass lidded containers but I need to organize my storage a little bit of first. So at the moment I'm just using baking trays and I cover them with foil to go in the fridge which isn't ideal. I would much prefer lidded containers especially because we're using the chest fridge as well and things get stacked on stuff. I keep an eye on the colour of the buttermilk chicken, removing it with a holy spoon, a perforated spoon as it cooks. The first few batches will be a lighter colour than later on. The flour will burn in the oil and it changes the colour. I always try and scoop the excess flour out, but with this size batch I normally top up the oil a couple of times over the cook and still end up with a pretty dark and yucky looking oil by the end. I put the chicken on a rack over a tray like always so that the fat drips off and the chicken stays nice and crunchy. We ended up having the bread rolls with lettuce and mine had cheese. There was mayo and tomato as well as the buttermilk chicken. It was pretty late by the time I got everything finished and I'd baked the rolls so it just seemed like a good solution to have for dinner. Uh, and that was partly why I was doing those fillets in slightly larger sizes so that this could be an option for another time if that's what we wanted to eat. 
This is what I ended up with in the way of chicken by the end after everyone had been served. So there's quite a considerable amount. I split it up into Ziploc bags for the freezer. I did try vacuum sealing this last month with the chamber vacuum sealer, but I didn't like how it came out of the vacuum sealed bags. Uh, it was all stuck together and it made it too difficult to then reheat it because you don't want to spend too long in the oven when you're reheating it. So by having it in just the Ziploc bags, I could just spread it out on the baking tray. So I put it on a rack over a baking tray in the barbecue uh, and that by being able to spread it out initially it means that it's going to cook nice and quickly stay nice and moist stay nice and, and then crisp up really well but without having to go soggy because it's all stuck together so I much prefer this in Ziploc bags than vacuum sealed but this is one of the few things that I do that way uh, but it did definitely make it easier so as I said, this buttermilk chicken in bulk, it's a lot of effort to do it and it's messy and everything else, but it really works well for reheating. Uh, you just lay it all out on a rack over a tray, put it in the barbecue at like 200 degrees and you've got 20 minutes, you've got this uh, buttermilk chicken that tastes almost crisp and fresh. And that's partly why I go to the effort of deep frying. As much as I don't like deep frying too many things, this really lends itself well to being reheated because it's deep fried. If I oven baked it initially, it wouldn't be so great to be reheated because it just wouldn't have enough fats in it to hold the moisture and and that sort of thing by deep frying at this initial time it means that when it cooks the next few times that excess sort of fat in the crumbs is going to cook out a little bit further and leave it nice and crispy so I think the trade-off is worth it in that and I try and do it only once a month so you know I do get comments sometimes like it's a lot of work to do this all at once to do a task all at once but I do prefer to spend one day doing a big cook up of something and then having that available for later on in the month then to have to do the same thing multiple times over the month but that's just me that might just be my preference and it might not be everyone's so thank you for watching again guys this was as I said I think it was about the third video in May the third set of food prep in May and I have half a dozen more to go so I am working on it when I can and when I'm capable of doing so uh, so I will see you on the next video that cat is walking around up on the solar panels <laughs> above me he is keeping me company today hey mister um, but yes so I will see you guys on the next video